Hello students, my name is Dr. Gajendra Purohit and you are watching our YouTube channel where I upload videos for engineering, mathematics and BSc students. If you are preparing for any competitive exam where higher mathematics is asked, our channel is very helpful for you. In this, I have started Vector Calculus 2.0 where I have taught some basic concepts. You can click on I tab to watch my previous videos. Today, I am going to have a discussion with you about the normal vector in the gradient and the normal unit vector. And if we have been given two surfaces, how can we find the angle between them with the help of the gradient. So, I am going to teach you all these things here. So, students, first we will discuss the unit normal vector. If we are given any surface and you need to find its unit normal vector, then first we will find the normal vector. We denote this unit normal vector by n or you can say n vector. If we have this surface already given to us, then find its gradient. So, what will we get here as a result? Its normal vector. If we have to find its unit normal vector, then what will we have to do? We will get n vector divided by mod of n vector. That means here we will get gradient of f divided by mod of gradient f. We will get this as the value, right? So, we have to apply the same concept, okay? I will try to give you an example that if we have some surface given here and we are being asked at this point, what will be the unit normal vector? So, what we have to do first? We will find its gradient and we know what the gradient of phi is. So, the gradient of phi is equal to del phi and del phi means i del by del x, j del by del y and k del by del z will be here into phi. This phi will be multiplied with the elements inside so, i del phi by del x and here it will be j del phi by del y and this will be k del phi by del z. Now, take the derivative of phi with respect to x. Derivative with respect to x is 2x. So, this will be 2xi. Taking the derivative of phi with respect to y, we will get 2y. So, this will be 2yj and if done with respect to z, we get minus 1. So, it will become minus k. We have got grad phi. Now, we need to find it at this point. So, what will come here? The gradient of phi at point we have been given 1 comma 2 comma 3 is equal to wherever there is x put 1 in its place. So, it will become 2i wherever there is y put 2 instead. So, this will become 4j and this will come as minus k. Now, dear students, this is our normal vector. Now, we need to find its unit normal vector. It will be the same n vector divided by mod of n vector. As a result, we will be having 2i plus 4j then minus k and here it will be under root of 4 plus 16 and plus 1. So, students, this will be 2i then plus 4j then minus of k divided by root 21. Listen, as I told you about the directional derivative in the last class, we are often asked that what is maximum directional derivative, which is in its own direction, right? And ultimately, this normal vector that we have got, this normal vector that we have, what is it actually? Whatever surface is given to you, it is its gradient, right? To find maximum directional derivative here, if you have not seen the video on directional derivative, it was in the last video. You can go and check on ITAP. There I had explained how we have to find the maximum directional derivative. So, this is the gradient that we have. We will find its gradient phi and then we will find the unit vector of whatever direction we have been given. What will be the direction? Will be in its own direction because maximum directional derivative is in its own direction. We will take its gradient as the unit vector. So, what does it mean to take its gradient as the unit vector? unit normal vector, right? When we find directional derivative in the direction of unit normal vector, that's what we call maximum directional derivative. And it's the same thing that I explained to you earlier. It's just a concept to remember, which is necessary. Let's move on. Next, we will discuss the angle between two surfaces. If we have two surfaces and their point of intersection, and you need to find at that point between those two surfaces, what will the angle be? We can easily calculate it. The formula is cos theta equal to grade f dot grade phi divided by mod of grade f and mod of grade phi. Students, if we look here, whatever surfaces we have been given, we will find their unit vector and then calculate the dot product. We can also calculate angle from that. These are both of the unit normal vectors. We will calculate dot product for both. Then also we can obtain the angle. Point remains the same, right? And students, sometimes we also come across the orthogonality condition. If the angle between the two is 90 degrees, what will the condition be? So, if we talk about cos 90, then cos 90 will become 0 for us and this will go into 0, right? And if the value of grad f dot grad phi is coming as 0, if the dot product of the gradient of two surfaces comes as 0, then the angle between them is always either 90 degrees or 
orthogonal. Pay attention to it as it's important for the exam. So let's take an example and try to understand the concept. Here we have two surfaces given and at this point tell me what you have to do with this. We have to find the angle. Starting it we will take the first one as f and go on finding the gradient of f. Right? Now what will be the gradient of f? It's derivative with respect to x into i. Now you will say this is a function. So what? Whenever we have been given any function, let's take all the terms together. Okay? This is minus 9, so this will be our f, right? Now, multiply the derivative of this f with respect to x into i. This will be 2xi. Put its derivative with respect to y into j. Then its derivative with respect to z into k, right? Now, whatever point we have been given, put those points into this. Then it will be gradient of f. And the point we have been given is 2, comma minus 1, comma 2. As soon as we put this point, it will be 4i. Minus 2j plus 4k. Next, we'll talk about g. Consider this second function as g. So, we will find grade g. Now, tell me what will we have here? It's g. Again, it's derivative with respect to x into i. It will be 2x into i. Again, we'll do the derivative with respect to y. 2y into j. It's derivative of the whole with respect to y. So, this will be 0. Only that will remain. Derivative of the whole with respect to z will bring minus 1. So, what will we have? Minus k, right? Now, whatever point we have been given, put those points into it. If we put 2, minus 1 and 2, then we will get 4i and minus 2j and minus k. Now, let's learn how to find its angle. So, what is cos theta actually equal to? Gradient of f dot, grade of g divided by mod of grade f, right? And mod of grade g, right? What are we getting here? We will put its value, right? So, how much grade f are we getting? We are getting 4i minus 2j plus 4k. Understood? Dot. This will come to us. 4i. Again, we have 4i minus 2j. Its value has been put as minus. Now, we will derive its mod and it will be 16 plus 4 plus 16. We will calculate this. 16 plus 4 plus 1, right? Calculating its dot product, i dot i is 1. So, it will be 16. j dot j is 1. So, it will be 4. k dot k is 1. It will be minus 4. Divided by, from here we have 16 plus 4, 20. And 36. So, root 36 will be 6. And this will be root 21. If we solve this, 4 will cancel with 4. Here we will cancel it. So, this will become 8, 3 root 21. Then what will we have here? We will get the angle, right? So, you can write theta is equal to cos inverse. This is how we find the angle, okay? Let's move on. In the next question, you are being asked to find unit normal vector of this surface at this point. The unit normal vector of whichever one is required, first we will assume it as f. Now, if we assume it as f, then here this will be x, y cube. z square minus 4. First of all, what will we do? We will find its normal vector, right? So, we will get grade of f, right? Grade of f is del f. So, derivative of the whole thing with respect to x into i. So, when we do it with respect to x, then this will come as y cube z square into i. Now, the derivative of the whole with respect to y into j. So, with respect to y, it will be 3. x, y square, z square into j will be there. The derivative of the whole with respect to z into k, it will be 2. x, y cube, z. 2xy cube, z. Now listen, put the point. So what will we do here? This will be the gradient of f and whatever point we have, that is minus 1, minus 1 and 2. Wherever there is x and y, you should cancel both minus and put 2 in place of z. Then it will be 4 and minus. So it will be minus 4i. If we keep it here, then this will become 1 and this 4 and minus 12 into j. If put here, minus will be at place of x. And here it will be minus in place of y and here plus. 2k, right? So, here we will get its value, okay? And next, when we'll put the point here, so wherever there is z, we will put 2 there. And this is minus and these two minus will become plus because y. Cube is there. So, students, this will become 4k. Is it clear? We have got the normal vector. Now, we need to find the unit normal vector. This normal vector will be upon the mod of normal vector. So, it will be minus 4i. Minus 12j plus 4k divided by under root of what will be here? 16. Plus 144 plus 16, right? We will simplify it. From this, we will take minus 4 as common. Then this will be i. Plus 3j minus k divided by 16 is common here. Look at 16, isn't it? 16 being common will be out. So, under root 4, this will come as 1 and this will be 9 plus 1. 4 and 4 will cancel each other. So, minus i. Plus, this will be 3j minus k divided by root 11. So, this will be the unit normal vector. We can do it easily like this. Let's move to the next question. So, in the next question, find the constants A and B. So, that the surface, this will be orthogonal to this surface, right? One thing I want to tell you is that here orthogonal is 
already given. So what you have to do here is find the values of A and B. So listen one thing carefully that whenever we have orthogonal means obviously the angle we are having is of 90 degrees and students at this point these are what to each other orthogonal right. So here if I take this surface x square y plus z cube is equal to 4 and I will take this one as a x square minus b y z equal to a plus 2 into into x right. Now we know that this point should treat both of these in what sense? It should satisfy both. First we will do it right. Then after that we will discuss using the orthogonality concept here. Look this satisfies both of these right. When we satisfy this because ultimately at some point an angle is forming. Obviously that point is given. So we will do this at 1 comma minus 1 comma 2. So here we satisfy this right. So wherever there is x we will put 1. So this will become a and it was minus. So this will come as plus. 2b which is equal to a plus 2. Is that clear to you? Because here this is x. a and a will cancel each other out. So b's value here is 1. So the value of b we wanted is here. We got it right. Now we need the value of a. Let me do one thing. I'll write down this function f. Okay. I'll consider this as f. Let's write f in a bolder way. So this will be ax square. And we have value of b. So take minus yz. And again take minus of a plus 2 into x. And let's assume this one is g. So I'll take this as g. And if I write this as g, then this will be 4x square y plus z cube minus 4. Now we all know it already that if two surfaces here are found orthogonal to each other, then the dot product of their gradient is 0, right? Because I told you the cos theta of this is equal to the gradient of f, right? Dot gradient of g divided by mod of gradient f, right? And mod of grade g. We have this formula and if this is 90 degree, cos 90 will be 0 and this will be multiplied. So the condition that we will have, what will that become? Gradient of f dot gradient of g, this is equal to 0. And we will have to find grade f and grade g, but we need to find it at that point, right? What do we do first? We find grade f, okay? So we calculate the gradient of f, right? How will we find the gradient of f? The derivative of this whole thing with respect to x into i. If we take the derivative with respect to x, we will get 2ax, right? But it won't come here. At this place, minus a plus 2 into i, right? The derivative of the whole with respect to y into j. So with respect to y, this will become minus z, right? So minus z, j and the whole thing's derivative with respect to z into k. So it will be minus yk, right? Now keep this point, okay? So students, we will get the gradient of f and the points are given to us. 1, minus 1 and 2. So we will put this point. So wherever there is x, we are putting 1. So this will be 2a. 2a minus a and a cancels with a. So this will come as a minus 2 into i. We will put it in place of j. So this will become minus 2j. And if put in place of y, so this will be plus k, right? So students, this is the value of grade f that we have got. Let's put the gradient f here. So what will this be then? a minus 2 into i, okay? And minus 2j and plus k will be here. And dot. Now let's calculate grade g. So in grade g, I will write it here. So, let's do the gradient of g here. It's better, right? If we calculate the gradient of g, it will be the derivative with respect to x into y. Students, when we do it with respect to x, then we will get 8xy into y, right? Next, it's derivative with respect to y into j. So, as a result, this will come to us as 4x square j. Now, derivative of this whole with respect to z into k. It will come as 3 z square k. Now, put the point. First, we will put the point 1 minus 1, 2 here. So, this will be gradient of g at 1 comma minus 1 comma 2, right? So if we will put 1 minus 1 here, then this will be minus 8i. Now we will put it here. So this will be 4j and if we put it here, then 4 times 3, 12. 12k will be obtained, right? So we will put this value here. Therefore, it will be minus 8i and plus 4j and plus 12k is equal to 0. If i dot i is 1, then minus 8, a minus 2. And j dot j is also 1, so it will be minus 8. k dot k will also be 1. So this is what we get. It will be 12 minus 8, which is 4. And this will be minus 8. A and plus 16, right? We are having plus 16. And this being minus 8. So I think this will become plus 4, which is equal to 0. So students, here this minus 8a will be equal to minus 20. And this a is equal to, it will be minus 20 upon 8. And these two minus will become plus. It's better, right? We will cancel this with 4, then it will be 5 by 2. This is the value of A and quickly tell me what will be the value of B. It will be 1. In this way, you can do this question very easily. 
I've explained the method. You can learn from it and do it, right? Let's move on to the next question. Find the directional derivative of this surface at this point in the direction of normal vector, all right? So students, what's happening here is that whatever directional derivative you have to calculate, you have to find it in the direction of the unit normal vector of this surface, right? So the A that you need, listen, ultimately I want to tell you, what is the directional derivative? The directional derivative we have is grid phi and dot, unit vector of whatever given to us and in whichever direction we have to find. This is the phi. Now what do we need to do with this? We need to find its unit normal vector, right? And whatever value we have for that, if we put it here, it will fulfill our requirement. It would be better if I put this as n cap so that you will understand because it's in the direction of the unit normal vector. What we will do here, this shy, what to do with this? We'll find its gradient. First of all, we'll find its gradient. So its gradient will be this. And inside this gradient, what we will do is take the derivative of the whole with respect to x into i, with respect to y into j, and with respect to z into k. This is the value. Now put this point into it. Upon placing the point, we'll get this. This is already with us. Now what do we need? We need gradient of phi, right? Let's put it directly and find gradient of this phi. So what will we find? The gradient of phi, clear? What's grade of phi? Derivative of whole with respect to x into i. It'll be y square into i. Derivative of whole with respect to y into j. 2xy plus z square into j will be here. The derivative of the whole with respect to z into k, it will be 2yz into k. k will be there. Put a point. So the gradient of phi and the point we have is minus 1, comma 2, comma 1, right? If we put it here, we will get 4i, right? And let's put the value here. So we will get x and y, then minus 4 and plus 1 into j will come, right? Plus 1 into j. And here we have y and z too. So this will be 4k. Upon simplifying this, we will get 4i and this is minus 3, then plus 4. So students, we have this here as the normal vector, okay? So we will calculate its value here and the directional derivative will be 4i minus 3j plus 4k and dot. So students, here we will have n cap and its unit will be, so first this will come as 0i minus 4j minus k under root of, what will we get? 0 plus 16 plus 1. We already know that in this i dot i is 1. j dot j will be 12. k dot k will be this divided by the square root of 17. So here we will get 8 by root of 17. This is the value of directional derivative. In this way, you can do this question very easily. Thank you so much for watching and how did you like the content? Let me know in the comments. If you've not seen my old videos on vector calculus, you can watch them here. If you're preparing for CSIR net gate and IIT jam exam and want to improve your shortcuts, you can watch the entire playlist and subscribe the channel. So dear students, thank you all very much. Bye-bye.